um, that makes a good transition to um, the next topic. Um, how would you deal with uh, foreign policy, uh, American foreign policy? Yeah. So, as a as a socialist, <clears throat> I see foreign policy very differently than I think a lot of my capitalist peers. Um, I think that a lot of the international tensions that you see today are because of our just insistent on a capitalist only approach to foreign policy. So um, I'll, just, I'll just dive right into it, I guess. I think, you know, um, if you look at what's going on with China today, I think if you look at that country as a socialist country, um, you recognize the fact that they don't care about things that traditional socialists value, such as patents. You know, China just doesn't really care about that kind of intellectual property. So, um, you know, I think in the US, there's a movement to do away with the patent system and to come with something that's more fair and equal. Um, and you're not just seeing folks like the folks in the Pirate Party talk about this, you're seeing folks like Mark Cuban talk about this. Like, you know, the patent system currently stops uh, innovation in the US. It's a major problem. So then you have, you know, folks like China who are trying to um, industrial, who have done the industrialization and now they're going into the tech center and they're just copying what they see. I mean, if you actually go to China, you'll see cars that look like they're the brand, brand the, 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 the name brand cars, and they're actually generic versions of the same car because they've just ripped them off. And I think if you get into that socialist mindset, you kind of understand that it's about the product being delivered to your people and it's not about the brand. It's not about that capitalist or GM making money. It's about your people getting the, the product. So I think that if we were to, I, you know, I was sort of silent on this issue for a long time because I know that there is a populist idea out there to, you know, kind of close our borders and, um, uh, you know, deal with trade through protectionism. But I think you're seeing that with President Trump. President Trump is clearly a protectionist, and I think that you're seeing the limits of the, of, of the problem with that. So if we switched over to a socialist economy and got rid of our patent system, and then actually were able to bargain with China and say, you know, if you're after intellectual property and we need your steel, you know, let's come to an agreement here. I mean, there would be way, you know, it would, I don't think it can be um, overstated how much trade and economics are at the core of international relations. I really think people need to get, 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 get through that because all we hear about in the US is, you know, well, you know, um, let's focus on, you know, we get into this weird tit for tat where, you know, we'll denounce something that China does, something Saudi Arabia does, and then we'll have people in the US say, well, they've done it, we've done stuff like that, you know, you know, Obama, you know, killed U.S. citizens with drone strikes or something like that. And I think that the human rights aspect is really important, but I also think the economic aspect is equally as important because I think that, you know, you, you see it at play right now. I mean, you know, you have President Trump say, well, I'm not going to stop trading with Saudi Arabia because they're going to buy military parts or, you know, weapons. So, I mean, you got to, as a socialist, we could take that leverage completely out. We could completely remove that economic leverage. You know, why are we trading weapons at all? We should be saying, okay, you know, we have nationalized, um, you know, electric cars or nationalized solar panels. What do you want? You know, what intellectual property can we give you? Can we work with you to help produce it? Can we make sure every, every uh, city in the world, you know, not even in our two countries, has enough solar and wind and renewable electricity to make sure that they're powered by it? Is there something like place we could go? And because we are locked into this capitalist system, we can't really think like that. And we're forced to kind of, you know, trade in some of the worst materials imaginable, which is weapons of war. Um, I don't see things like that. I think we can, I, I also think if you had a socialist economy uh, or anti-capitalist economy that you could, um, you know, we wouldn't have to be reliant on places like Saudi Arabia buying our weapons in order to save X amount of jobs. And if you had a basic income, the jobs would matter a little bit less. 
because we could say, well, no, we're going to shut this factory down because it would only make weapons of war. And we'll open it back up again when we get, you know, um, you know, a contract for, I don't know, solar panels, you know, or pipes or something like that. So our, our whole economy really has to be changed for the better. And I think that's the difference between me and a traditional like, like progressive capitalist. Interesting. So uh, what do you think about what's happening in Venezuela right now? Um, sure, that's, that's a great question. Um, you know, Venezuela, for me, the short term and the simplest answer right now, especially with the Trump administration in charge, is that the U.S. should absolutely not be intervening in Venezuela at all. I mean, we, we have no right to intervene in Venezuela. That's clear as day to me. Um, our history in that region and internationally for a regime change and for coups is disgusting. So, you know, I, I, I for me, it, 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 it's really clear that other administrations in the past have tried and that the Trump administration has an opening to actually have a regime change in Venezuela. And I just, you know, it can't be American led. Um, I don't think Maduro is as popular as people on the left tend to think he is. I just think that Juan Guaido is also probably less popular than Maduro. So this is a problem of um, confidence in elections, confidence in democracy. And I think that if the U.S. would sort of move our role as the international police person to um, give that up, and work more cooperatively with the UN, I think we'd see a much more harmonious world. You know, we have no right to say that we are the authority on well-run elections. We're, that's laughable, we're not. But I think if you went to the UN and said, you know, okay, we'll give you money, we'll give you resources, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll send people your way if they wanna volunteer and be part of your service and core. And, you know, all we ask in exchange is that you take over as a true international body with representatives from every country, um, you know, uh, who have a diverse set of ideas as the um, go-to agency for resolving conflicts internationally. And I think that, you know, if we had UN observers and international observers go into that country, and I know people have, and I know that, you know, they've said that the last election was, was, was fine. It was just the matter of the election being boycotted. Whose fault is that? Is it the opposition's? Is it the locals? Uh, is, is, it the, is it the regime in charge? And, you know, it's really important to kind of figure that out. So I don't think we have any right to say that. I think we have to just admit our history in the U.S. and say it's our time has come to give this up and to delegate that responsibility to the U.N. And I also think you could do that in terms of military as well. Um, I, I know this seems sort of far out there, but I do really think that we've got to start to see that our imperialist agenda and you know pro-colonialist agenda is now going to try to be emulated by China or Russia. You know they're going to keep we're going to have another arms race with them or worse. And it's time to just be the bigger a person in the room. It's time to be the adult that we claim to be, and hang up our hat and take organizations like the UN that have a proven track record of peacekeeping in in a very effective ways in very non-confrontational um, uh, ways and say, we're gonna hand over a large chunk of our um, military uh, industrial, our, our, our military infrastructure to you, because we trust you to do this more than we trust ourselves. Because we're just one country of many, that could be an organization that could actually be truly representative of a democracy amongst countries. Um, I think that you, you there are, there's precedence for this. Like, I think the EU has something similar to this, um, but, um, I also think that um, if we do it through the UN rather than through any of the other like pro-capitalist agencies out there, like the IMF or the World Bank, you know, if we actually do it through an agency that is founded on human rights principles and spreading them, and then hang our hat up and stop being this um, exceptionalist voice in the UN for, um, <laughs> you know, um, anti, you know, I mean, <laughs> Uh, if you look at what happened with the UN this last round to Venezuela, I mean, we're the ones saying, let's go through the regime change. Uh, other countries are saying, no, let's go through with the aid. And we're not just hanging up our hat and saying, you know, let's just let other countries that have a better insight into this work it out. And then I think we could be that example for Russia and China, and they'll do the same. And then regional authority will actually kind of take over and say, okay, well, here's actually what's best for the people. 
maybe we'll schedule another election, maybe we won't, but let them figure that out. I just don't think the U.S. has any kind of interventionist role anymore. And in fact, our role needs to be to show that we've moved on and we expect other countries like China and Russia to move on as well. Yeah, very interesting perspective. And so uh, do you think um, Trump is uh, right uh, talking to uh, Koreans, Korea's, uh, North Korea's leadership? I mean, the, the, uh, that whole scenario is a, it's a camera ready opportunity for both of those regimes. Um, I, I don't really feel like either party, the US or North Korea was actually going to make significant change one way or another. Um, I, I, and I think that some of the things that we were like willing to negotiate on are just ludicrous. For example, you know, negotiating on formally ending the North Korean war. Like that, that shouldn't be on the table. We should have, we should sign that tomorrow. I guess that's something that I would do if I was elected. I would easily sign that document that said, yep, yeah, this has been over for a long time. Let's all move on. Um, you know, um, and, and um, uh, I, I do think that with, with we, I also think that the U.S. should not be playing some sort of proxy war or proxy sanction system through North Korea to China. I also feel like that's another example where we, we lose all legitimacy when we directly intervene with our own sanctions and then our own, you know, showy statements about, you know, uh, inter, uh, 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 international conferences with them where nothing really gets accomplished. I just feel like if we were serious in this arena, this is another area where we would hang up our hat and say, we failed. We have failed to protect that area. We put a military base in South Korea. They, no one can really afford it. We're fighting over who can afford the military base. Let's just hand this over to the UN and start over. And um, I, I, I really do see that we need to create a new age where we are not looking at a Pax Americana, you know, that means an international peace based on US military force. We're looking at a Pax UN, a United Nations Pax, where I think that we vest military interest in the UN <clears throat> or a similar, um, you know, uh, well-respected agency that has true democratic representation of all countries. And then we just, we, we are finally able to uh, reduce our own military spending, give um, a, a, a clear, um, you know, strong footing to a, a true neutral body that I think could be internationally respected. Because when we do sanctions now, it's kind of seen like, oh, the US is just trying to get something out of that country or the U.S. is playing some sort of proxy game, or the CIA is involved with some sort of long-term plan for regime change. I mean, you know, it's one thing after another after another, and I just don't think our, our reputation is going to recover unless we put a, a good faith effort in to just demilitarize ourselves and move that military force to an agency that's seen as independent. Excellent. Um, and so, last question on foreign policy. Um, how about the... Uh, uh, is Israel-Palestine relationship. How, how sure. can we uh, handle that? <sighs> that's a great question. Um, that, that's a really good question. Um, yeah, so I am, I am ethnically and racially Jewish. I don't practice Judaism. Um, I was raised a different religion. Uh, but, um, you know, I, I get this question a lot and, um, uh, you know, I, 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 I sort of, I don't like uh, going into identity politics, but I think this week with what happened to Congresswoman Omar and her attempts to be censured, um, I, I needed to speak out. And one of the things that I did say was when you are someone that um, is, is racially Jewish, um, you do get people coming up to you that assume that you're pro-Israel and, you know, pro-Israeli defense force, um, pro the occupation of Palestine and pro-apartheid. And, you know, um, they obviously don't see it this way, but I've been asked by quite a few people, oh, you know, people just throw money at you because you're obviously pro-Israel because you're Jewish. Just come out to these parties, meet these donors, you know, get, 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 get involved with this clique. And it's disgusting. It, it, it revolts me uh, as, a, as a person that loves peace, as, as a person that doesn't want to see the atrocities committed. And, and as a Jewish American, I really feel that um, 
painting, painting everyone into a corner of being either anti-Semitic or pro-Israel is disgusting. There, there, are, there are thousands, maybe millions of, of Jewish uh, you know, Americans and Jewish people worldwide that uh, obviously think what Israel is doing is, is completely wrong. Um, you know, there's tons of, of peace groups that are focused on um, 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 Israel and, 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 and Judaism. And none of them are saying that, you know, oh, yeah, pro-peace is obviously what, what Israel is doing right now. And I also think it's completely ridiculous to say that, you know, here in the U.S., the Trump administration is obviously a problem, obviously doing terrible things. But the Netanyahu administration in Israel, because they're what part of Israel or because they're Jewish, can't be criticized. I mean, that's just totally insane. Some of these comments that the I, I watch a lot of uh, foreign television, like I watch a lot of like <laughs> French TV, I guess you could say, because, you know, everyone feels like everyone's got a propaganda station up. If you actually look at the um, statements that are not being covered in the U.S. Uh, media, um, by um, the Netanyahu government. I mean, they made this horribly offensive comment about Poland recently, just unbelievably offensive about Poland's participation or lack of participation in World War II. I mean, it's just, I just can't understand what that Netanyahu administration is thinking. And I also cannot understand how anyone can defend that administration. They're, they're under indictment, similar to President Trump. I mean, to defend the Netanyahu administration is just, I, I don't understand what kind of person could do that at this point. So I hope and I pray that the people of Israel elect a new sane government that has a completely different point of view when it comes to the treatment of people in Palestine. Because right now, I mean, I'm on record as saying that what Israel is doing to Palestine is akin to apartheid, maybe even worse because of all the deaths we're seeing. And the complete overreaction and the use of force is internationally um, uh, illegal. I mean, we have to recognize that. You can't say to someone that flying a kite that could have a bomb is equivalent to the reaction that Israel has, which is to just shoot protesters on site. I mean, that's just completely ridiculous. I think we have to take a real rational look at that situation. In the short term, that issue could be solved very quickly for people that would just um, take a look at what Congresswoman Omar's statements are and realize that they're the truth that they are the truth. Why is there a pro-Israel lobby full with millions of dollars out there trying to cover for the Netanyahu administration? That, 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 that seems to be very problematic and we, we've got to tackle it head on. And you know, quite frankly, this whole issue has really riled me up um, because um, I've been attacked for thinking, you know, for, for, I don't, people don't call me anti-Semitic, thankfully they have a half a brain and can realize that I'm Jewish and that doesn't make any sense. But um, you know, uh, you know, they, they just continuously equate Israel with anti, you know, with, 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 with all Jewish people. And that's just a total fiction. I think we've got to separate that outright. We, we you know, we, we, uh, we can't let them do that in America either. We can't let them say, oh, if you attract President Trump, you know, you're anti-American. Like, that's just nonsense. We have to constantly be uh, critiquing ourselves and improving ourselves. So, you know, that's, that's sort of my, my, my two cents on that. Um, before we move on from... Uh, foreign policy, can I just make one more addition? Sure. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, I just wanna also say that, you know, I think that you're looking at, um, there has been a lot of talk recently about weaponizing space. And I think that that's a really important topic that can guide a lot of what I've been talking about. Because I've been mentioning really big and bold ideas about demilitarizing the US and then handing that over to an international authority like the UN. And I think that a lot of that comes from the fact that if we don't, we're gonna see our space force versus China's space force versus Russia's space force having like ridiculous space battles. They're already doing this in the, in the, in the virtual world, um, in the online world, you know, attacking each other, hacking each other, trying to figure out who's a state actor, who's not. I mean, we've, we've gotta just declare this over and just say, offensive force and defensive measures have to be handled at the international level and just kind of move on from there because we're one planet at the end of the day. We can't be weaponizing space. I just absolutely cannot do it. And I don't think the U.S. has really, you know, we've, we've had um, supposedly 
uh, you know, left-leaning democratic administrations that have not <clears throat> adhered to the principles of, uh, of, of once and for all, you know, stating that we're not going to weaponize space. And now you have Trump come along and say, we're creating a space force, hooray, you know, and all pro-U.S. -mil pro military folks kind of going along with it. So I think we, we've got to have a president that, that has enough guts to say, no, we are taking a stance once and for all. We're not going to develop a space force. We're going to help the UN develop something that has a sense of clear framework on how the space is going to be non-military uh, and not used in that front. I mean, think about if there was an asteroid about to hit the Earth tomorrow. I don't think that rival countries could independently have a shot of shooting out of the sky. That obviously would take an international effort. And that's what we need to start thinking about as, a, as, as one planet. Excellent. Mm -hmm.